guys, welcome back. Uh, I've been debating whether I wanted to make this video for a while. I always feel hesitant to speak in specifics about places that I've worked or like, I usually won't say them outright or name them. But I wanted to share about this account because I felt like I had some useful information to share and just give people an idea of what they might be able to expect from it, especially new drivers. So that's kind of who this video is directed toward. My first trucking job was actually for a small, like very small 1099. And that's a whole different animal, as you might know. <laughs> and there were some positives about it, but I went to Schneider because I wanted more rigorous training. I had already started making trucking videos and it, it would be funny to go back and see some of those now, but people who had seen my videos, I was getting some feedback like you shouldn't continue working there and they were right. Uh, one of the real drawbacks of working for some of these small 1099 companies is out of date, poorly maintained equipment and where they're just kind of keeping that truck running. And that was what happened with me and I was in that situation where something happened with the truck and something that had nothing to do with me whatsoever could not possibly have had anything to do with me and immediately the company guys were like trying to put it on me and that's the kind of thing that will happen a lot of times when you work for one of those small companies. You know there are plenty of downsides about working for mega carriers but one of the significant upsides is that when the truck needs maintenance they're gonna get it done right away and usually you're not gonna be running in old equipment that is prone to breakdown so what I wanted to do in this video is talk about the things I learned from this experience and some of the positives and I want to start with the positives so let me jump right in the person who recommended that I go ahead and work on the Schneider Walmart account the reason why he suggested it in large part had to do with how I was talking in my videos about my struggles as a new driver with things like backing and maneuvering and which is just such a universal challenge for people. This person was like, if you work on this account, you're gonna get so much backing experience, you're gonna get maneuvering experience and you're gonna be going to these parking lots for these retail stores that you're gonna have to practice that. Definitely having to maneuver and back into loading docks as a new driver every day multiple times a day was a really good experience for just getting more comfortable with backing and in the beginning I was really not good at it partly because I had been I really can't blame it on this but I had been driving a split axle flatbed which was obviously driving a split axle and backing a split axle is a different kind of challenge so it was really nice to be able to hone my backing skills in a regular trailer we did need to move the tandems around from time to time one other thing i really liked about it was i was working out of a walmart dc so here's a couple of big things it's really nice when you're a new driver to not have to stay over the road you can like stay out but most times you're gonna come back to that DC and if you're on a dedicated account like Schneider or I know like Martin a couple of other carriers have accounts with Walmart have you know where their their drivers will park bobtail there overnight it's really nice to have that to come back to and they have shower facilities for us which were not great but they had them uh, so that was kind of an advantage because for a lot of new drivers being able to comfortably back and maneuver your truck in a truck stop, it's not gonna be easy in the beginning. And it's not to say you shouldn't try to do it. I'm just saying it's an advantage if you are coming back to a DC at the end of your day and you have a place to park bobtail. It's a lower stress situation because driving all day on that account is high stress, can be very high stress. There's a predictability to it. So your days are pretty similar from one day to the next. You're not going super far. You're doing multiple shorter runs because you're going to stores that are all kind of in the same vicinity with one another. So downside, not getting a lot of miles. Upside is you're getting in and out of the truck more often. It's much better for your body to be doing that than to just be sitting in that seat for really long stretches, which is what I'm doing now. It's it's crazy what a difference that can make for how you feel. You would go to, you, you get a trailer, and if you're earlier in the day, you're gonna have, usually you're gonna have a dry van. And I'm talking daytime schedule, so there's a, a big difference between daytime and nighttime on this account. If you are doing a morning schedule, you're most likely going to be delivering your first trip is going to be with a dry van and you're going to be going to either two or three stores. And then you're going to come back to that DC and you're most likely going to pick up a reefer and you're going to take that to two or three stores. It's usually three stores per trailer. The biggest challenge on that account that is makes it super stressful is that you really need to be able to deliver two trailers in order to 
make enough miles to make money on that account the pay is obviously pretty low and that's one thing I didn't want to say in this video or like harp on is like the pay is terrible because I think it's kind of universally understood that if you're a new driver and you're working for Schneider you're not making top dollar and generally speaking if you're a new driver you're not making top dollar especially if you're working for a mega carrier and I could harp on that all day I think it sucks but it is a reality in the industry so that's partly why I'm hesitant to like name an individual company because the issues that make it crappy for new drivers and hard to make money even though you work really hard and all of that are more systemic issues. They're industry-wide issues. They have to do with lack of regulation on the trucking industry that started in the early 80s that made a race to the bottom for trucking wages. So that's a whole other video. It's a whole other subject. So I'm really trying not to go into that too much in this video because it's like we know these things. There's other videos we can talk about that in. Just for now, let's just talk about specifics about the Schneider Walmart account. What makes it good what makes it less good for drivers well there's that there's the fact that in order to get those miles you need to get those two loads and you really need to get back to that DC at night because if you don't that's gonna cut into your drive time for the next day and that's gonna make it that much harder for you to get two loads and the likelihood of being able to get two loads done is generally already on the lower side if you're a daytime driver because you're also contending with traffic and of course this is just one experience, so it really does depend. There's DCs all over the country, right? So I was in the one that came out of Sterling, Illinois, so it's far western Illinois, it's very rural. You're not as often gonna be going into Chicago, for example, although sometimes you do, and that's not very fun as a, as a truck driver. You know, if you're in certain regions, you're gonna face more or less traffic, and that's gonna determine how much you can accomplish in a day, how many loads you're able to get done. As a new driver, it's very helpful to help you learn time management because you don't have time. You don't have time for bathroom stops, really. You have to figure out a way to make it work, if you know what I'm saying, and I know you know what I'm saying. So then, let me say another thing. So when it comes to the pay conversation, if you're a person who already knows that you're a night owl and you like working nights, uh, you can make fat money on that account even as a new driver. If you're willing to work overnight, the pay is dramatically higher per mile. I'm not gonna talk about specifics with, with cents per mile because I think that's probably somewhat variable, but I think it can be a difference of something close to 20 cents a mile close to it. Don't quote me on that. And I know some of you may be thinking, okay, well, Schneider recently started advertising that it went to hourly pay and that's true, but I don't know if they are doing that company wide or just on some accounts. As far as I know, it's still on cents per mile pay on the Walmart account. You also get stop pay, which is pretty cool because like the company I work for now, we don't get stop pay and that can really be significant when you're sitting at a stop for any length of time and you're not making any money on it. That's pretty rough. So working nights, if you can work overnight, you can make significantly more pay, but something to note about that is not everyone should try to force themselves into working nights. It's a very hard thing on your body. It can really mess with your circadian rhythm, like your, your natural rhythm. If you're a person like me who works better during the day and you try to switch to working overnight, it's such a dramatic change for your brain and it can really affect your mental health. It can affect your energy. And one thing you'll learn if you're a new driver or thinking about getting into trucking, energy management is the crux of your life. Like a lot of us fall into patterns, with, whether it's with caffeine, nicotine, all kinds of things to stay alert and stay energized because I don't think a lot of average people have any idea about the energy drain of like the focus it takes to drive a truck throughout the day. People think, oh, you just sit and drive, but it's so much more than that when you're driving a semi. It's it's very draining. So sleep management is crucial. And if you think, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna stay up all night so I can make that money, it might work for you, but it really might not. I found that out the hard way. I tried doing that for a week with my, my trainer, or as they call it in the Schneider speak, the TE training engineer. She works overnights. So she makes awesome money, like amazing money, but I can't do that schedule. And I tried to do it with her for a week and I was, I was screwed by the end of that. That was, I was like, I can't do this. I, I can't do it. I was depressed. I was exhausted. I was just like, I felt like a mess. So that didn't work for me but it works for some people and if you can make that shit work, good on you because the other couple of things to think about if you're a new or prospective trucker is driving at night, it can be very tiring. You can't see as well, obviously, because it's a lot darker, especially if you're driving to places like where I was that are rural and there's very poor lighting. You're in these like farm country roads and it's dark as hell. 
your eyes adjust so you do get more used to that but it's still it's more difficult and like when you're in the environments of the stores or you're maybe in a suburban environment sometimes in a city environment it can be really difficult to see like are my tandems about to go over that curb because it's too dark to see that can things like that small things but it can be a real challenge when you're a new driver and also just the safety aspect of like you know deer running out in front of you when it's dark and stuff like that it's more to think about and then of course with inclement weather too there's that whole element of it but if you're a person who can handle working overnight a thing to think about is there's way less traffic at night and that totally lowers the stress level so this sort of leads me into let me talk a little bit about some of the real negatives that i experienced on this account i have to tell you that in my experience granted it can be different for other people but my biggest challenge were the Walmart employees themselves. And let me first say there were some great ones that were like on the ball. They're happy to like unload your trailer. I don't know if they're like thrilled about it, but they're on point and they seem to recognize that you do a hard job. They have a hard job. There's a lot of pressure working for a company like that. And people might be like, oh, you're just a Walmart employee. And I reject that whole idea of like downplaying the stress of jobs because maybe that job doesn't require as much education or whatever the hell it is. Those jobs are hard. Retail environments are, are stressful. There's a lot of pressure on the employees to perform. And some employees take that more seriously and other employees just blow it off. So you can get lucky and go to a store where you have a manager that is ready for you when you show up and they're like, okay, let's get this truck unloaded. And they've, they've got their employees like sort of paying attention and focused and they're doing it. And I think you're more likely to have that at night. My big challenge working during the day is that I was going to a lot of stores where part of the issue is that there were a lot real young employees and they literally would go and hide when I would show up and they would be like, you know, they suddenly need a bathroom break. <laughs> and then Schneider implemented this thing where they would send an alert to, they thinking it would make more efficiency, you know, send an alert to the, the Walmart to let them know that the truck is coming. Well, all that did was tell the employees when to go hide. <laughs> so I'm laughing about it now, but when I was working on that account, my stress level was through the roof and that had a lot to do with it. And part of it was I would back into the dock. I would go to the door at the back of the store where you're supposed to buzz in when you're making a delivery. And I could hear employees on the other side of the door talking to each other, but no one would answer the door. And that was because they were not the manager who had the key to the, the padlock on that door. So you just are standing there hoping that they told the manager, but if they're kids that don't want to unload the truck, then they're not going to immediately go get that manager. And you're just sitting there like, fuck, you're stressed out. I would literally book it physically run up to the front of the store, go to the service desk, be like, I need a manager to unload my truck. And I was real direct about it because you have to be aggressive sometimes or you'll just stand there and wait and feel like an asshole because you're just waiting and waiting and no one is unloading you and you're just like, your clock is ticking. I think it's unfortunate that you have to feel that much stress for stuff that's outside of your control when your job should be to drive the truck and you should be able to make a living driving the truck and delivering stuff, but you're at the mercy of these employees. I want to say there were some great ones, including young people and a uh, shout out Tipton, Iowa. <laughs> I always think about that store. It's like the tiniest store you have to. The only way to deliver at that store is to drive around the cars in the parking lot and hope that when you get there that they're situated in a way that you can fit around them. There's physically no other way to get your truck backed into that lot for them to unload you. And they don't even have like a normal loading dock. Their employees were so cool and so like efficient. It always blew my mind. And I would tell them like, can you go talk to some of the bigger stores and let them know like how you do things here so you know you get lucky and you have some good employees like that but that's the thing you're at the mercy of those employees uh, you just don't know what you're gonna get and if you are waiting on these employees it's eating up your 14 and that's the thing and if you haven't driven trucks before that won't make sense to you but long story short you are working against a very strict DOT clock that determines when you can and cannot drive and if you can't get that second load executed because you have run out of drive time because these kids didn't feel like unloading your truck and they took 45 minutes to do what could have taken 15 minutes and believe me I had that situation plenty of times it, it just screws you over and that's where your paycheck is just tiny so that was
was a super stressful aspect of it. I don't know who other than the overnight drivers would really recommend working on this account if they were an older, more experienced driver because I would like to think that there are so many more lucrative things for them to be doing unless they have seniority so they're able to make significantly more per mile, which is very possible. I think it's probably more suited to an inexperienced driver who wants to just get better at running that clock, gaining efficiency, learning how to back and maneuver efficiently because if it takes you 20 minutes to back into a dock, that's eating your clock and it'll force you to become more efficient. Be like, I want to get in that dock in five minutes or less so I can get in that store and hope that they're going to unload me efficiently. Another thing that I want to say is kind of a, a significant negative that I experienced was on the back end at the DC, they seem to have a lot of issues with staffing. And you know, it's funny to me because back in the day I, I used to avoid shopping at Walmart because I knew that they had a, a long-term history of not being great to employees. I kept thinking about that while I was working on that account being like, why is it that they clearly have such a problem staffing the uh, people that load the trucks, load the trailers at the DC. I can't say that I have the most educated perspective to speak from on that. But at the DC it's, itself, there were so many times when you're just sitting there, you have set your NAT in, in the Schneider speak as your next available time. You set that time and that's when you're supposed to be ready to start driving. Um, but I would have to strategically start it, set it for like two hours before I wanted to start my clock because I knew that there wouldn't be a trailer ready for me until then. And that is always what the case was. You just sit there and wait. And then the people in the office were very stressed out and you could tell. And it was a kind of thing where you didn't want to bother them. You just try to stay out of the office. And it's like, I just think that's again, kind of endemic in the trucking industry. It's so high stress for so many people. And there's a lot of reasons I could get into in this video, but I won't because <laughs> I feel like it kind of veers into a whole other subject, which has to do with ethics and regulation or deregulation and all that kind of stuff. So we can talk about that at another juncture, but overall, uh, would I recommend working on this account? If you're a new driver, here's what I would tell you. It's going to be punishing. It's going to be stressful as hell. You're going to be working against that 14 every day that you work and it's going to be really hard, but it's going to condition you. And what I would think of it as is paid training. And also I, on that note, Schneider's training is pretty rigorous and thorough, although it was kind of inconsistent. You have some really good instructors. You have some instructors that are not great. They are clearly struggling to have enough training engineers. So like my TE uh, was very young, a lot younger than me and not, she's only as experienced as I am now, which is like a year or less experience. I'm about a year in. But as young as she was and inexperienced, she was a pretty good teacher. She actually helped me more with backing than a lot of the far more experienced drivers that I had worked with. So you just don't know, it's kind of a mixed bag. But in general, Schneider is known for having very high safety standards and pretty rigorous training. And that was, that was pretty good. So if you're a new driver and you wanna get a good basis of just feeling like you, you have a good foundation to work from, then I would recommend this account. And just know you're not gonna make great money. You're gonna work your fucking ass off. You're gonna be super stressed out and you're gonna wanna wrangle some of those, wrangle? You're gonna wanna strangle <laughs> some of those Walmart staff people. But some of them, you're gonna wanna hug them and say thank you for understanding the situation that I'm in. One other thing I wanted to mention that is a really important point is when you're a new driver, so like when I, I said I started off driving a split axle flatbed and when you drive flatbed, you don't couple and uncouple from trailers very often, almost never. It's just the same trailer getting loaded and unloaded all the time. On that Walmart account, you're gonna couple and uncouple from trailers all the time. One of the negatives where I was working, and again, this could vary from one DC to another, but the yard drivers there were very aggressive, which is I think common in a lot of places. They're just in a hurry all the time. I can't explain in detail why someone out there who has more experience than me could explain it better than I could. But basically the way that they aggressively drop and grab those trailers ends up and they're heavily loaded obviously. So it makes it so that it can be really hard to crank the landing gear when you're trying to couple and uncouple. And that happened to me a lot on that particular account. And a pointer I would give any new driver is what my dad told me. My dad has been trucker for over 20 years is start in low gear. Don't try to 
because you're going to have way too much. Uh, sorry if this makes no sense to you if you are new or haven't driven trucks before and you're going to or whatever. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you're trying to crank the landing gear in high gear when it, there's a lot of weight on it and the ch the odds are that the like the legs of the landing gear are not completely aligned straight. It's like they're on a slight angle because of the way that trailer was dropped aggressively. That's probably not a good explanation, but I'm trying. I'm doing my best. You're going to torque your back and or like shoulders and stuff. If you're trying to force it when it's in high gear, put it in low gear, crank, 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 crank. It's not going to look like it's moving. And eventually it'll release and you'll hear it and you'll feel it. You'll hear it start to release and you'll feel it and then put it in high gear and then crank your landing gear. It's the best pointer my dad gave me and it really did save me. I still use it, but now I'm on a different company, different account, and I still have to couple and uncouple from trailers all the time. And it's nothing like it was on the Walmart account. I think it was those aggressive yard drivers. That's my theory. But coupling and uncoupling, uh, Schneider is very rigorous in the way that they train that because having a trailer disconnect can be deadly and terrible for any truck driver. So it's very, very important to go through a specific procedure every time you do it. And they're really good about teaching that. I was really glad to learn it. And I use things I learned there and at the company I'm at now every single time I drop and hook which is most of what I'm doing these days on that Walmart account you're gonna have to do that a couple of times a day so because you're gonna have to pick up and drop off trailers from that DC so that is really really good practice for that I also want to add one of the real negatives in terms of what makes it difficult to get miles and therefore make money on that account is because you're always getting live unloaded versus doing a drop and hook which you do once in a while but most of the time you're not that's where the time gets eaten up and that's kind of what I was going to talk about I don't know what point this clip will show in the video because I'm kind of going in circles here but that's one of the challenges of this job is like waiting on the people to unload you if you can drop and hook that's awesome the dedicated Walmart fleet drivers those guys do the drop and hooks which is partly why they make the big bucks so another good thing about being at the DC and working out of a DC is that they have a scale there and it's not I don't believe it's a certified scale but it gives you experience in scaling loads and being able to feel the difference between when a load is is balanced properly and when it's not uh, side note I want to recommend an app it's called slide calc I still use that app I started using it when I was on the Walmart account and I found it really helpful if you need to reweigh, if you need to slide your tandems it's a great way to figure out where exactly to move them that and another tool that I'd recommend is a tandem slider stop that's a little peg that fits into the holes on the rail that you can then specifically choose where you want to put your tandems without sitting there going back and forth and putting stuff on the ground and trying to measure that way it's much more foolproof and it's a better way to save time so getting to scale your loads though when you're headed out of the DC is really nice just to actually know that you're weighted correctly not you know take the guesswork out of it I keep turning off the video and thinking I'm done and then thinking of other stuff to add <laughs> I wanted to tell you another thing that to me is sh like such a huge advantage of working on this account that I can't emphasize enough especially for new drivers you're going to Walmart stores every day and I can't tell you when you're on some other types of accounts or you're doing other trucking jobs, it can be really difficult to just stock up on supplies. If you're living in your truck and you're living on the road, if you're a full-time OTR, which is what I'm doing now, I actually got rid of my apartment recently so I could start paying down some debt and divert the money that I was spending on rent when I wasn't even home most of the time because I'm driving all the time. It's hard though to, to get to grocery stores and stuff and even now like I try to work in a Walmart stop because now I know for sure I can park in Walmart lots or probably like Target lots stuff like that but if you know for sure you're going to go to Walmart stores every day you're not going to have a hard time keeping your groceries stocked and that's one positive really the only positive of being in those stores where it takes them a long time to unload you well you know you can kill a little bit of that time by going and doing your shopping so that's a real advantage. The other thing too is I, I mentioned uh, bathroom breaks you know that's one a, a nice thing and it sounds silly but when you're a trucker we all know it uh, there are limitations and if you can pull up to that store and you get them to start unloading you you can run and take your bathroom break you can do your shopping and then go back to where they're unloading you and maybe by that time they'll be done delivering to a retail store like that those are advantages that can't be underestimated because as a truck driver uh, as my dad puts it, it, it's an inconvenient life. So 
there are some major conveniences added by working for a retail store like that where you're going to that store every day. Uh, so with that, I will bid you adieu. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please like and subscribe if you are so inclined. I'm trying to grow this channel and I want to provide content that I hope is helpful and interesting to others in the trucking industry. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.